Good day mga kataksosyo! We are going to discuss the very hot issue today in the world of business online selling and any other forms using electronic media. We have heard some comments from our business partners in the online selling and some were mad, panicking, and upset due to the recent issuance of BAR Revenue Memorandum Circular No. 60-2020. I fully understand your sentiments and these are valid and legit observations. In today's vlog, I will try to explain in my very humble way to help our online sellers and other sectors who are affected by this new memorandum to understand where the BIR is coming from and also be able to help them comply with their business registration which is the core purpose of this vlog. Before we proceed, let's take a look some of the comments from our dear friends, the online sellers from Facebook page and from the TV news programs. Gusto na rin bubisan ng Bureau of Internal Revenue ang online selling na pinagkakitaan ng ilang nawalan ng trabaho dahil sa pandemic. Pero tinutulan nito ng ilang senador na ang tanong, e bakit hindi raw ang mga pogo ang habulin? Nakatutok si Cedric Castillo. Pake, paketing order ng... Dating grade school teacher si Venice pero dahil resigned na sa trabaho, minabuti na niyang pagkakitaan ng pagkahilig niyang mag-bake. Noong Mayo, nagsimula siya magtinda online ng mga ube cheese pandesal, banana loaf, blueberry cheesecake at iba pa. Marami ring nag-push sa akin na parang, sige, mag-ano ka na, mag-benta ka. Nung nag-boom naman siya, nung first week nakabenta kami ng 250 pieces na pandesal, so parang natuwa ako, tinuloy ko na siya. Ang events coordinator at makeup artist naman na si Mara. Sa online, nagtitinda ng meat products, mga ulam at homemade chili oil kasama ang kapatid niyang photographer. Marami kami na nag start pa lang sa online selling. Ayon sa DTI, marami ang kagaya ni na Venice at Mara na dumidiskarte online para makaraos sa krisis na dala ng pandemya. Sa revenue memorandum circular na inilabas ng BIR nitong Hunyo lang, pinaalalahanan nito ang lahat ng nagnenegosyo o kumikita sa pamamagitan ng online transactions na dapat rehistrado ang kanilang negosyo at nagbabayad sila ng buwis. Kasama rin ang iba pang may kinalaman sa e-commerce, gaya ng payment gateways, delivery channels at internet service providers. Hinihikayat din silang ideklara ang mga nakaraang transaksyon para mabayaran ang karampatang tax. Hanggang July 31 ang ibinigay na deadline ng BIR para hindi mapatawa ng penalty. Sinabi ng Department of Finance sa isang pahayag na unang bahagi lamang ito ng tax collection program ng DOF at BIR. Himay-himayin muna natin mga katakososyo ang laman ng RMC 60-2020. First, the legal basis kung bakit inisyo ng BIR tong memorandum circular na to at sino-sino ang nire-require or notify to register their business. And under registration, ano yung gagawin ng mga persons, particularly ng mga taxpayers affected by this memorandum and required to register their businesses. Section 236 of the National Internal Revenue Code or NIRC as amended by train law BIR used this codal provision to remind everyone that all persons engaged in the ordinary trade or business kailangan magparehistro sa respective BIR revenue district offices kung saan located ang inyong business or residence. At ito yung mga impormasyon na kailangan sa inyong pagrehistro sa inyong negosyo. So kung ang tanong natin mga katarsosyo, may basihan ba ang BIR para mag-impose ng ganitong requirements? Ang sagot ko yes because of this provision sa ating tax code. RMC 60-2020 giving notice to all persons by reminding their obligations pursuant to Section 236 who's conducting business transactions through any forms of electronic media which is not limited to partner sellers or merchants but also other stakeholders such as payment gateway channels like Paymaya, Dragon Pay, delivery channels like Lazada, Shopee, etc. and internet service providers like the giant telco companies in our country and other facilitators. Now, under other facilitators mga kataksosyo, these include vloggers and as also confirmed by someone from the BIR, but still confirming their inclusions in this revenue memorandum. But still, it's good to know that given the time na i-require na tayo ng BIR, alam na natin yung mga basic requirements. So, BIR laid down the procedures on how to proceed with the 
registration of your business. For those uh, doing business without TIN yet, you may follow the general business registration guidelines no? as required by the BIR. And for those who have TIN already but their businesses are not yet registered with BIR, you may follow the general business registration guidelines as well. For individual, to register your business, you may use BIR Form 1901 and for non-individual like corporation, you may use BIR Form 1905 to update your registration details. I will post in the description below the link of my past videos, the topic about on how to register your business for the step-by-step -step procedures. For the bookkeeping requirements, it is required by law that all persons engaged in business shall keep and maintain sets of books of accounts pursuant to Section 232 of the NIRC. For the issuance of invoice or official receipts, it is required by law under Section 237 of the same tax code. The BIR requires the affected sectors to register or update their business registration until July 31, 2020 and encourage them to voluntarily declare their past transactions without incurring any corresponding penalties if declared and paid on or before July 31, 2020. Ang tanong dito mga kataksosyo, sobrang ikli lang ng time or palugit ng BIR for these taxpayers to account for their past transactions. Let's see if magbibigay ng extension ang BIR dito. However, habang wala pang extension, for those affected, try to catch up with the deadline. BIR clarified though in one of the interviews that the intention of RMC 60-2020 is not to go after for the unreported sales or unpaid taxes for these merchants. The BIR uh, may just want simply the taxpayers to register their businesses in order for them to pay and remit their taxes to the government following the lifeblood doctrine of taxation that taxes are the lifeblood of the nation and without taxes, country cannot deliver government services and build much infrastructure. Pero lilinawin ko lang, hindi nangangahulugan na pag ikaw ay nagrehistro sa BIR, automatic na magbabayad ka agad ng buwis. Later in this vlog, I will show you how income are not subject to income tax. Before anything else, I would like to qualify that this personal opinion of mine does not substitute any professional or legal opinion from other tax experts. This is merely my own point of view in such a way to help and guide our online sellers not to panic and stay calm. Let me begin with by quoting the codal provisions of our tax code that says, Except when otherwise provided in this code, Section 23, Item A, a citizen of the Philippines residing therein is taxable on all income derived from sources within and without the Philippines. And item E, a domestic corporation is taxable on all income derived from sources within and without the Philippines. In this time where the rapid increase in the digital transactions and advance in technology, government should cope up with these rap rapid changes. So the law clearly says na lahat tayong mga Pilipino Ikaw man ay mapa-individual or korporasyon na kumikita ay dapat magbayad ng buwis sa gobyerno. Again, uulitin ko, it doesn't mean that when you register your business, automatic magbabayad ka na kaagad ng buwis. Let's try to erase that notion mga kataksosyo. I understand that most of the sentiments of our friends from this sector, and in fact I am one of those, ay kung bakit ngayon pa sa panahon ng pandemic caused by COVID-19. To be honest mga kataksosyo, BIR issued similar memo way back in 2013 through Revenue Memorandum Circular 55-2013, reiterating taxpayers' obligation in relations to online business transactions that covers different mode of online transactions such as business to consumer, consumer to consumer, and business to business. BIR identified also the different types of online selling such as online shopping or online retailing, online intermediary services, 
online advertisements or classified ads, an online auction. In the same circular, BIR laid down the business registration and guidelines including the bookkeeping requirements and issuance of invoice or official receipts and the payment of relevant taxes if necessary. So the memo also provides its penalty provisions if failure to comply mga kataksosyo. Revenue is going after online sellers to boost tax collection next year. BIR Chief Kim Inada says the agency has not monitored taxes paid by online stores despite the growing number of transactions made online. She notes the online selling community is part of the 300 billion peso informal sector. Earlier this month, the BIR surpassed the 1 trillion peso mark. This year's tax collection has already increased by 14% compared to last year, but the BIR has yet to reach its target goal of 1.66 trillion pesos. <laughs> Yung talagang store na sa online, hindi eh, income tax ang pattern niya, no? Wala naman yung pinagkaiba sa mm -hmm. tindahan. Yes. Ang tindahan lang nila na sa internet. Yes. Mm -hmm. Walang physical kailangan structure. Kailangan sila. Uh -huh. Kaya kailangan registrado sila, nag-i-issue sila ng resibo. Mm -hmm. They're not nothing different. Revenue's tax collection recently breached the 1 trillion peso mark, bringing the agency closer to achieving its goal for the year. But next year is another story. Although the implementation of the Syntax Reform Law is expected to boost government revenue, that appears to be not enough. The BIR is planning to go after the tax payments of online stores. Here to discuss these issues is the trillion peso woman herself, BIR Chief Kim Anaris. Good afternoon. Merry Christmas and I, Happy New Year. The same to you. And I'm not sure who started calling you the trillion peso. And one of your efforts there is to start to monitor and make sure that people and businesses who sell uh, goods and services online yes. um, pay their taxes. Yeah, they, that they register and they pay their taxes, issue receipts. No? If I sell my second-hand refrigerator on Sulit.com, am I liable to pay any taxes? No, because you're just selling your second... You're not engaged in business. No? We're talking about people who are engaged in business, no? who trades who buy sales or who produce and sell. No? They don't need to have their own website. They could sell through one of these. Um... So my take on this mga kataksosyo, the deadline of July 31 without any, any penalty is a good gesture from the Bureau following that 2013 RMC. But then again, I heard the sentiments of our online sellers, especially in these trying times where most of the world's economy suffers due to this current pandemic. Thus, I am hoping that in these trying times, a leeway to the July 31 deadline will be given to our affected taxpayers. Pag-uusapan natin mga kataksosyo ang nature or classification ng isang individual when it comes to business tax. Mayroon tayong tinatawag na non-VAT at VAT. If your gross annual sales is not more than 3 million pesos, then you are classified under non-VAT, who will be paying a percentage tax. Otherwise, if your gross annual sales is more than 3 million pesos, automatically you are classified as VAT taxpayers, which you are required to pay the value-added tax. They are both business tax in nature, mga kataksosyo, at dyan lang sila nagkakapareho. As to the percentage naman, under non-VAT, regardless kung magkano ang kinita mo or kikitain mo sa isang quarter, you are required to file and remit the 3% percentage tax sa BIR. For the VAT taxpayers naman, the rate is 12%. However, since this is, this is an indirect tax, mga kataksosyo, mayroon kang input VAT from your purchases na pwede mong ipambawas sa output VAT mo. Unlike sa non-VAT, since percentage tax nga ito, siya ay direct tax. Which means, the payment for these tax types is right from your pocket. More detailed comparisons of non-VAT versus VAT in one of our more upcoming videos. So stay tuned and hit that subscribe button for notification for every new uploads of our videos. Pag-uusapan natin mga kataksosyo ang taxation ng isang self-employed individuals classified as non-VAT taxpayers since ang issue natin ngayon ng ating mga kaibigan sa online selling ay malit na nga lang kita ko, bubuisan nyo pa ako. O yung iba naman, ang sinasabi ay hindi mo na kailangan magbayad ng tax kasi di ka naman umabot ng 250000 a year. Ang self-employed individuals ay may dalawang tax regime na tinatawag. You have the option to use the graduated income tax rate na kung saan bubuisan tayo based dun sa kapasidad ng ating kita using the individual income tax schedule. 
meron naman tayong option to avail for the 8% flat income tax rate during the registration process or filing of our Q1 ITR, whichever comes first. Ang sinasabi ng batas ayon sa Republic Act 10963 or train law, ang lahat ng kumikita below 250,000 ay exempt from the payment of income tax and only the excess will be subject to the 8% flat income tax rate. Ito po ang isa sa mga general principle of taxation na all persons shall be subject to an internal revenue tax based on its capacity or ability to pay. Ito yung tinatawag natin theoretical justice. So, under the regime of graduated income tax rate, mga kataksosyo, if you choose this option, then on a quarterly basis, you are required to file and pay the 3% percentage tax. Ang tanong, kung, uh, kung wala akong income sa quarter na yan, magbabayad po ba ako ng tax? Ang sagot ko, hindi. Pero, kailangan mo pa rin mag-file ng iyong 251Q tax return na naka-nil, NIL or zero to avoid open cases sa BIR. And of course, on a quarterly basis, you need to file your quarterly income tax return using BIR Form 1701Q and your annual income tax return using the graduated income tax rate. So, ito yung mga taxes na dapat nating i-comply on a quarterly and annual basis, mga kataksosyo. Under the 8% flat income tax rate regime, by availing this option, you are no longer required to file and pay the quarterly percentage tax of 3% since the 8% option is in lieu of all taxes, meaning ito na yung katumbas or pamalit para sa anumang business tax na babayaran mo sa BIR. So unlike doon sa graduated income tax rate, pag yun ang pinili natin, we are still required to file and remit our taxes, yung percentage tax natin, on a quarterly basis. So, ang tanong, ano po ang mas okay? Yung graduated or 8% flat income tax rate? Later, mga kataksosyo, I will show you its comparison in terms of tax efficiency at kung saan tayo makaka-save. For BIR compliance purposes, regardless of your annual sales, mga kataksosyo, you are bound and mandated by law to comply the registration requirements by paying the annual registration fee of 500 pesos, comply with the bookkeeping regulations in order to record all your accounting transactions, comply with the invoicing requirements as required by Section 237 for that, that for every sale of goods, leases or sale of services amounting to 100 pesos, you are required to issue an official receipt or invoice. And finally, you need to file and remit your taxes on time by being a citizen of the Philippines earning an income. With the recent issuance of RMC 57-2020, BIR has removed the mandatory requirements of mayor's permit in registering your business. So, how this affect your registration with BIR, mga kataksosyo? Meaning, you can now proceed with the registration without waiting for its release from the LGU. Dati kasi, di tayo nabibigyan ng business permit, we cannot proceed with the BIR for the registration of our business. So, ngayon, because of that RMC, we can now register our business with BIR without any uh, providing or attaching the copy of our mayor's permit. But just want to remind you, mga kataksosyo, business permit is only required to those persons registered under DTI or SEC. Mayor's permit is not required for professionals who have their PTR or OTR. Before I will end this topic, mga kataksosyo, I have prepared a simple illustration as to which is better, the graduated income tax rate ba or the 8% flat income tax rate. By using a scenario wherein mayroon tayong 350,000 gross annual sales, undergraduated and in ko yung 40% optional standard deduction, which is always better sa most of individuals na nasa ganitong business. 
So, meron akong 140,000 na total expenses. By subtracting my expenses from my sales, I now have a 210,000 pesos as my taxable income. At dahil nga I am using the graduated income tax rate, I will be using the individual income tax schedule with the graduated rates. So, since under our table, all taxable income below 250,000 pesos for income tax purposes, yung income ko po ay tax exempt or exempt from paying income tax. While under the 8% flat rate, using the same sales na 350,000 pesos minus yung first 250,000 pesos which is the allowable deductions for self-employed who is not subject to VAT, then yung excess lang dapat yung masasubject sa 8%. So, in this case, the excess of 100,000 pesos will be subject to 8% income tax flat rate. So, ang tanong pa din, which is one is better? If you can see sa baba mga kataksosyo, assuming yung sales natin na 350,000 pa din, no, will be divided into 12 months and multiplied by 4 quarters. Since ang percentage tax natin is on a per quarter, yung filing and payment, so mayroon tayong quarterly sales na 87,500, then multiplied by 3%, so for quarter, mayroon tayong 2,625 pesos na babayaran. And on annual, mayroon tayong 10,500 na babayaran sa BIR compared sa 8% flat rate, kung yun ang gagamitin natin, na 8,000 pesos lang, which is Yung 8,000 natin is in lieu of all taxes. So, by using the 8% flat income tax rate, nakapag-save ako ng 2,500 pesos sa isang taon. So, sa mga nagtatanong mga kataksosyo, magkano po ba ang gagasusin ko lahat-lahat sa pagre-register ng aking online business? So, gumawa ako ng isang illustration with the uh, best estimate figures para makita natin kung Magkano yung total estimated fees? So, for the first time registrants, we need to pay the annual registration fee sa BIR worth 500 pesos. And then, 30 pesos for the documentary stamp tax for the certificate of registration or COR natin. And then, to comply with the bookkeeping regulations, since hindi naman tayo VAT registered, we are only required to submit yung four sets of books of accounts. So, yung per booklet, it costs around 50 pesos. So, multiplied by 4, nasa 200 pesos. Ang, ang manual books of accounts naman, mga kataksosyo, uh, pursuant to the bookkeeping regulations, you are not required naman no, to secure uh, a book every year. Ang requirement lang, we need or another stamping once ma-fully exhaust na yung mga pages or yung libro. And then, for the ATP, for the issuance of sales invoice and official receipts to comply with the invoicing requirements, it ranges from 1.5 to 2.5. Depende kung uh, paano mo negotiate sa printing press or sa printer. So, mas maganda kung may kakilala tayo. So, we can lower the price. And then, ang requirement naman dito ng printing press is 10 booklet. Normally, one booklet uh, nasa 50 pages or 50 series. So, 50 times 10 nasa 500 and the validity of your official receipts or sales invoice is 5 years naman from the time of issuance of the ATP so matagal-tagal din but of course mas mabilis maubos ibig sabihin kumikita tayo so yung subtotal natin dyan uh, it cost us around 3,230 pesos and then for the subsequent registration you know, follow, following year uh, we need to pay only 500 for the annual registration fee. And then, in case na we are required to register our business sa DTI, so, may iba-ibang uh, price or value depende dun sa level. For the barangay, it's 200. For the city or municipality, it's 500 pesos. Then, mayroong region, national. Uh, 1,000 and 1,200 respectively. And then, mayor's permit, uh, I'm using, for this illustration, I'm using the rate in Makati uh, kasi 
ito yung medyo malaki konti yung rate but uh, the rate is 0.005 lang of your gross sales so ma ma maliit pa din uh, so assuming we're using the 350,000 sales so ang babayaran mo lang is 1,750 but for the first time registrants since wala ka pa namang gross sales ang basis ng mga LGU normally is based on the initial capital So, assuming na mayroong kang DTI at saka mirrors permit, in a way, yung DTI mo, uh, ang validity naman nun is good for 5 years. Okay? So, ang mirrors permit, nire-renew na, ng annual. Okay? So, total fees natin, including mirrors permit and DTI, it would cost you around 5,480 pesos. So, sa first time lang talaga ang medyo malaki, but on the subsequent registration, medyo okay na. Ang take ko naman dito mga katasosyo is that on the lighter side or in, or in the bright side, pag mas malaki yung binabayaran kong tax sa gobyerno, ibig sabihin kumikita ako, lumalakas sa negosyo ko, nag-grow yung business ko. So, ibig sabihin, kumikita yung online business ko. And that's one thing na ipagpasalamat natin kaysa maliit yung tax na binabayaran mo, ibig sabihin, yung negosyo mo, hindi, hindi masyadong kumikita. So, yun lang naman yung sa akin dito. And that's one thing that we would like to be thankful for because nag-grow yung business as we pay more taxes to the government. And lastly, mga kataksosyo, para mas lalo tayong kumalma, under Republic Act 9178, an act to promote the establishment of Barangay Micro Business Enterprise or BMBEs, providing incentives and benefits therefore and for other purposes. All businesses, mga kataksosyo, whose total assets does not exceed 3 million pesos are covered by this act, which provides exemptions to the BMBE or Barangay Micro Business Enterprise member, except from payment of income tax, and possible exemption also in local business tax, or if not, at least maybe minimized. Once you are covered, mga kataksosyo, you are required to renew your BMBE certificate for every two years from each issue, issue, uh, issue once. So, di ba, mas maganda mga kataksosyo. So, ibig sabihin, ang gobyerno mayroon namang mga mechanism or incentives or scheme na binibigay para doon sa mga small uh, business owners no na hindi naman kalakihan yung kita Before I finally end this vlog I hope and pray that somehow this gives you an understanding on how taxation works in the Philippines and we will be able to survive in these hard times I'm sure of that Though in these challenging times, government should be able to cope up with the rapid change in the technology and we taxpayers should be able to accept as well the challenge and be open and learn to accept the change. Benjamin Franklin once said, In this world, nothing is certain but death and taxes. And from French writer Voltaire also said, In the matter of taxation, every privilege is injustice. Again, Thank you mga katak-sosyo and good day!